Apple Baker Niner Delta Charlie, take 69. Can you tell I went to film school? Sup bitches, the king is back. Today, we're gonna be talking about anime. Maybe I should hide the film behind me, you know what? That works. Anime, that thing you got bullied for liking as a kid and in high school, but now it's the new meta and everyone and their grandmother watches anime. Yo, I need to make a nose hole in this thing. Jesus Christ. There is a lot of great media out of Japan, but I think you and I all know what the most popular form of media from Japan is. Porn. <laughs> Just kidding, I, I totally mean anime. Guys, please believe me, I, I meant anime. Please believe me! Please believe me! Now, when you think of anime films or movies, you might think of classics like Akira. Or, if your mind goes more recent, you might think of Dragon Ball Super Broly, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Movie Zero, and uh, uh, surprisingly, Demon Slayer Mugen Train, which just exploded out of nowhere and somehow became like the highest grossing Japanese movie ever, or it's in the top five or ten or so. It was insane. Like, the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie hasn't done anywhere near as good. Personal opinion, if you like it, that's cool. Demon Slayer is mid as all hell. And I'm talking about the story and the characters. Animation is mwah. Oh, that shit is chef's kiss. It's pretty good. Pretty really good. Anyway, no, the film we're going to be looking at today is some one film very near and dear to my heart. You can probably tell from the back what it's from. That's a that's a dragon. Huh? Dragon? That's Do you see the dragon? You you know you know what the next word and letter coming out of my mouth are gonna be. That's right, we're talking about Dragon Ball Z movie five. My mask is fucking up. Cooler's Revenge. Movie five. I know what you're thinking. Bad King Brian. My lord, my king. Uh why the fuck are you reviewing an anime movie that's <laughs> nowhere near recent? Well, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I kind of post whatever I want on here, but we're spicing things up. I'm talking about Dragon Ball Z Movie 5, because uh, I watched it a couple weeks ago. Forgot how good it is. In like a month, I think I've rewatched it four times. It's a damn good movie. Uh, yeah, uh, join me and we'll talk about what's so good about it. But first, let's get to the plot. Alright, I uh, also took some notes. Hope you don't mind. If you do mind, let me know in the comments, and I'll do a better job memorizing what I'm going to say. Uh, it's not a script. This is more outlines, but uh, hey, whatever. <laughs> Let's talk. All right, so the movie starts with Bardock. Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. And the rest of the Saiyan race on planet Vegeta getting annihilated by Frieza. Kind of sucks. They had a bad day. They're all dead. Whatever. Anyway, Goku escaped in his little space pod thing pretty awesome and it turns out that cooler is the brother of frieza all right that makes it sound like cooler was an established character turns out frieza has a brother named cooler why was he never mentioned before why wasn't he mentioned in season four of dragon ball z when frieza and king cold were on earth i'm gonna be honest with you the dragon ball films aren't very good with continuity until you get to like uh super or the very end of Z, like Battle of Gods and all that stuff, that actually impacts the plot. The original DBZ movies had nothing to do with the original show. They just exist. They're just like filler. But they're super fun to watch. Anyway, Cooler Ship detects that Goku is escaping planet Vegeta, and Freeze is kind of in the middle of committing genocide. Cooler Ship detects that Goku is in a little pod going to Earth. It looks like he's heading toward a planet cut Earth! Which... That's my first thing that bothers me, is the fact that Cooler knows that Earth is called Earth and Salt. They're just like, yeah, he's heading to some planet called Earth. Bitch, how do you know that? Uh, this has nothing to do with the plot, but we first meet Goku on uh, Master Roshi's island and he does a Kamehameha that is so biblical, it literally parts the sea. Goku's making Moses look like a damn scrub. Get on his level, Moses. What? Oh, you got some stick. Goku's got a Kamehameha for your ass. Am I gonna go to hell for saying that? Watch 
watch this. I can make the walls go higher. You what? The gang goes camping and someone drops in to spoil the party. You guessed it. These guys are Cooler's Armored Squadron, basically Cooler's version of the Guinea Force. We are the Guinea Force! Bitch, what the fuck? Anyway, a fight breaks out. Cooler shows up. He like death beams Goku. Does he do it with his finger or is it from his eye? I think it's from his eyes. So he's like, bang. Uh, and he wounds Goku very badly as Goku tries to protect Gohan. Yep, that's right, bitches. He protected Gohan. Keep calling Goku a bad dad. The gang then hides in a cave and, uh, well, Cooler doesn't believe that Goku is actually dead. So he has his boys, uh, his armored squadron, kind of look around for Goku uh, because he wants to make sure Goku's dead with his own hands. Even though he could literally just like, from orbit, blow up the planet. But hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes sense. Cooler multiple times mention, mentions like crossing his family and it's like, okay, yeah, you could do, you could like hunt him or you could just blow the planet up while he's in this weakened state and you know for a fact he's dead. <laughs> but hey, whatever. Gohan and Icarus end up flying to go to Korin's tower to get some sensu beans to heal his dad. Meanwhile, Krillin stays behind with Goku. I'm a fucking idiot and just realized that I left the mic on my desk. <sighs> but whatever, audio was probably still pretty clean. Uh, let's uh, keep going, I guess. Anyway, if you don't know how scouters work, I guess we're gonna get into some of the DBZ lore. I'll make it brief. Scouters can detect people's power levels and uh, unlike Cooler and all of them, like his armored squadron, even Freeze and his dad, they can't control their own key. So they can't suppress their power so low that you're basically invisible. You can't pick, well not invisible, but like the scouter won't detect your, your you as a life form or your power or anything. You have a power level of only five. <laughs> Pitiful. That's why Krillin and Goku are sitting tight. Besides the fact that Goku's like dying. They're sitting tight to avoid detection and Gohan is flying up really high above where Cooler Armor Squadron is patrolling. And rather than Gohan flying and expending some of his key, he relies on Icarus to fly because he's more of a natural animal, doesn't use key. So he's not really gonna pick up unless, he's not gonna be picked up on the scouter unless he like flies as fast as he can. That was foreshadowing by the way, that does happen later in the movie. Anyway, Gohan gets the sensu beans. Him and Icarus peace the fuck out. He gives he gives Icarus a sensu bean because he's been flying all night and into the morning. And Icarus flies really fast. They pick him up on the scouters, and well, oh hello there. I call this my can opener attack. But then, just then, the greatest black character in all of anime. Just then, Piccolo shows up. Piccolo ends up uh, killing two out of the three of the Armored Squadron members and he has a pretty dope ass fight against Salsa and then Gohan ends up going to give his dad a sensu bean. He gives his dad a sensu bean and then Krill and Gohan get <laughs> fucked up by Salsa. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, earlier, so the reason why Salsa gets to where Goku and Gohan and Krillin are is because Cooler comes out kind of distracts Piccolo. Uh, it's 5 a.m. Jesus. I decided to sit down for a bit because why not? Anyway, so then Goku and Cooler, they have their big fight. Uh, he also just like completely decimates Salsa. It's pretty funny. Don't care. Don't care. Uh, the fight is awesome. Damn! Damn! Goku wins 
is by sh literally shooting, blasting cooler into the fucking sun. This man gets yeeted into the sun. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. I love it. I fucking love Dragon Ball Z. This shit is insane. Uh, movie over. Oh yeah, Souls is still around, but Piccolo kills him with a special beam cannon. And kind of a continuity error. But Salsa doesn't have a hole anywhere on his body. But he dies. Anyway, the end, happily ever after. Now let's get into why I love the film so much. Hello, it's me again, and I'm standing up. Anyway, as a kid, I watched Dragon Ball Z growing up a lot. It was pretty awesome. One of the coolest things I'd ever seen as a little kid. Still love it to this day. I mean, we all know what Dragon Ball Z is. We all get the gist. I mean, we've all seen it. Like... If you didn't watch Dragon Ball as a kid and your parents never like put it on for you, I mean. If you'd never seen uh, DBZ by the time you were 10 years old, the government would probably send police to your house and then have your parents hung for war crime. First off, uh, the movie is funny. It's hilarious as hell. Like when we think of DBZ or just Dragon Ball in general, the first thing you probably think of is the action. And whew, don't worry, we'll get to the action, don't you? Whew, cause it gets nasty, baby. But uh, it's freaking funny. Like I had a lot of fun. I I chuckled quite a few times. Like there's some great like like the, and also there's just some great lines. Like you can tell when they make the English dub for Dragon Ball. Sometimes they're just having fun with it. <laughs> like the line "Bean Daddy," so good, so good. What? Not in the Bean Daddy this time. Bean Daddy. It reminds me of in Dragon Ball Super. This is way more recent. This is from like two, three years ago. But I, we've all seen a clip from Dragon Ball Super where there's an evil version of Goku called Goku Black. And sometimes when they refer to him, they just call him Black. And when Trunks arrives with Goku from our timeline, uh, the Resistance sees him and starts shooting at him. And Trunks says the line, Egglehead murderer! Hold your fire! This man isn't black! What? <laughs> I can't take this shit seriously. I fucking love, I fucking love Dragon Ball as a series. Holy fuck. You might be wondering, what's with the, the towel? Uh, well, in case you couldn't tell, I am a little, I am a little chunky. Uh, and I'm wearing a fucking bag on my head. It gets hot in this thing. I'm not kidding. I might like draw a couple more. I drew like an extra hole here. It doesn't help, not a lot. Maybe I should do an extra here, maybe put one or two on the back, but that also just looked really weird. Also, this hole, I did make it sound like uh, I purposefully put it there. I didn't, it was an accident when I was cutting out the eye hole. I kind of made a hole here. Uh, when the armored squadron first show up and they, uh... <laughs> and one of them is like swinging Gohan by his tail, it's so funny. And then Salzo, the leader of the armored squadron, just like posted up on a rock, just like munching, eating the stew they were making. <laughs> He's got a line that's like, man, these guys are really good cooks. It's so funny. <laughs> hey, is this guy's gonna cook? Uh, also, armored squadron uh, refers to uh, Gohan as monkey boy. Huh. This monkey destroyed Frieza? <laughs> so, going somewhere, monkey boy? Uh -oh. yeah. Hey, what you got in the back there, monkey boy? Stop raising! I'm so not used to this. Guys, give me some time, and I promise you, the content will be top tier. Uh, anyway, the soundtrack. Oh my god! Oh my god! It is so fucking good. Now, if you want to know something about me, it is that I love like rock and heavy metal, alternative rep metal, shit like that. It's the shit. And they have bands like Disturbed, Pantera, uh, I think Pearl Jam, and uh, like it's, oh, there's so many good like heavy metal bands and just songs that are used, not just in this Dragon Ball Z movie, but a lot of the early ones. It's iconic. The, this is for only the Dragon Ball Z English dub. Japan didn't like contact disturb. This was like America, uh, Funimation, the American uh, guys that dub everything. <laughs> they got heavy metal. They got some dope ass shit for. The, that's part of the reason why these movies are like are so like memorable from my childhood. I love the music, <laughs> and it just it oh my god, it adds so much to the fights. It's like wow. 
Also, Disturbed is one of my favorite artists of all time. Well, it's a band. Listen to Disturbed. They got some good shit. I fucking love Disturbed. But, like, one of the most memorable moments uh, concerning the English dub uh, and the soundtrack is in uh, the first Broly movie, the legendary Super Saiyan, <laughs> the song that plays, like, exclusively for Broly when he's, like, transforming is that one Pantera song that goes, My skin is cold. Like, God damn, the tingles, bro. Straight up goosebumps. I fucking love it. It's so good. I The soundtrack alone, 10 out of 10 material, baby. Hang in there, Dad. I'll be back soon. Now, the action. I uh, wrote a little specific sentence. Uh, the fight choreography shot composition and i can't read that word the fight choreography shot composition and animation are all amazing especially for the time so i think most of us could agree that some of the more modern anime films have quite a significantly larger budget and better animation than some of these older uh, films, especially like the Dragon Ball Z ones, which are mostly filler and don't tie into the story. But oh my god, the, so, so many of the Dragon Ball Z movies are just absolutely goaded for their animation, uh, specifically the action. Like, there's so much just like dynamic, like camera movement, you know, we're like following them. Like, one of the best parts in this fight is where. <laughs> You got Cooler in the foreground, and then you got Goku in the background, and he like floats up, does his Kaioken, and I love the sound design for the Kaioken, it's so cool. And he like dashes at Cooler, and the camera, we like punch into where Cooler is, and then it does like a like 360 times two. Uh, 720, boom, got it. She like circles around him and like cuts, it gets right up in Cooler's face and she goes, BAM! And Goku appears right behind him. <laughs> he gets him, Goku like flies around to do another maneuver and then <laughs> Cooler disappears right when Goku goes to punch him. And then Cooler just reappears, but <laughs> with the same like thing, but he elbows him, it's so good. And again, Moses being put to shame, not once, but twice in this film, once by Goku and once by Cooler. And that part where Goku rises up from the sea and he does a Kaioken again, but this time shoots like a Kamehameha, gives it all he's got. And Cooler, what the fuck does this absolute Chad, this absolute Sigma male do? He flies right into it, <laughs> flies through it. Goku like puts some more energy into it. And then Cooler comes out of it and just goes, BAM! Anyway, I absolutely love the fighting. I mean, that doesn't even include like some of the other side characters. Gohan is <laughs> kind of worthless in the movie. He doesn't really get much fighting. Boo, you suck. So if you're a huge Gohan fan, not really for you. But considering me, who my favorite character is Vegeta, uh, he's not even in the movie. And I, it's maybe one of my favorite DBZ movies. But other characters like Krillin actually gets a decent little fight. It's only like 30 to 60 seconds, but the choreography and animation are pristine. They're good. And Piccolo, oh my lord. Piccolo wipes out Cooler's Armored Squadron. Just all three of them get absolutely yatted out of existence by this man. Well, he's a Namekian, but 
whatever you know what i mean piccolo is just he's awesome <laughs> his fight is so cool he's such a badass he like shows up he's he's got like the, the crossed arms and he's got his like turban thing and his cape on and then as soon as one of the guys like flies up to him he punches but he hits the cape because you know piccolo he's a he's a very fast man man got speed for days and it's just awesome to see just how like Piccolo is the MVP of this of this whole film. Like, it's so good. Um, you know, besides Goku who beats Cooler, and besides Cooler who's one of the most memorable Dragon Ball Z movie villains in my opinion, he has a fifth form. It is so good. Now, <laughs> there was a lot of rambling here. The point is. The movie's good. It's so much fun. Like, I was watching it and, you know, look, comparing it to some of the, like, more modern movies. Like, some of the other ones that I mentioned. Like, Movie Train, Movie Zero, uh, Broly. Broly, which is from the same the same franchise. Uh, to this day, I think it's still one of the best pieces of animation I've ever seen. Like, it's so crisp. <laughs> Anyway, this movie is so good. I watched it so many times as a kid, and I just rewatched it again, and I, I had to make a video on it. And I wanted it to be the first big video back. It's kind of give you guys a taste of uh, just the kind of content I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be using the green screen a lot, but don't be surprised if I talk about films every now and again, or an anime, or like even like American television, you know? So I really, really want to kick it into high gear and start just producing content that you guys can enjoy and i hope it brings a smile to you or you're just entertained uh or if you've never seen cooler's revenge man it's it's all it's it goes by quick too like there is no it's the ex, this movie this movie is the exact opposite of me you see how skinny you see how thin that is like it's 45 minutes 46 minutes long it's a breeze anyway this is the outro the king is back Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. That would really help. Almost forgot to mention, don't forget to subscribe to join the kingdom. If you're already a member of the kingdom, thank you so much. I truly love and appreciate you as one of my citizens. You're fucking awesome. As one of my subjects, I, I appreciate the hell out of you. And uh, you guys have an awesome fucking day. I'm going to go do some editing now.